because I appreciate what the company stands for and the values it upholds. Part of the reason why we're here to talk to you today about our core values and why we have them. And so David's going to um, address that in our Founder Friday today. There's one more that I wanted to, um, to read and it says, Azure is more than buying groceries. It's a community of like-minded folks looking for a healthy lifestyle. I have shared Azure with friends and family because it's been a wonderful experience. So I thought that's just some of the feedback that we've received for customers, but so many of you really um, said that you resonated with our core values and that was what was important to you. And one of the big things that drew you to Azure is what we stand for and we appreciate that. Um, you know, we like that unity and that like-mindedness. Um, and so, without further ado, I'm going to pass the floor to David, and he is going to share what our Azure's core values are, which you can see behind us here. And we have this on our walls of all of our buildings um, here at Azure as a reminder to us of what our core values are and um, the why behind them. And so, David, all to you. All right. Well, thank you. You know, I've, I've heard... Uh, that core values for many companies is just a buzzword kind of, and it's something that, oh, there, there's some corporate, uh, you know, board of directors meeting or something, and they come together and they try to figure out, well, what core values, what do we want to stand for? Well, I will tell you this, that did not happen that way here at Azure at all. Not even the slightest. In fact, we went the first probably 15 years in business, maybe closer to 20 years, without ever writing our core values down. The core values we felt like, hey, true core values is basically following the golden rule, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's the basic core value of good business practices. But, you know, as we got further along, that maybe is a little bit too vague. And as the team grew and we got a much bigger team, um, I felt like it was important to write down the things that all team members here at Azure should be thinking about. And, you know, originally I didn't, I had no intention of sharing our core values publicly. This was definitely for the team because we wanted to have a unified uh, team that all kind of understood. And hey, if you don't like these core values, don't work at Azure. I mean, that's kind of what the message that I wanted to get get by was. This is what we stand for. If you don't stand for the same and you don't, you know, you don't see at least most of this from the same perspective, it's probably not a fit. And, uh, and truthfully, it has been a great, a great blessing to do that. So we went through and, and it was a little bit of a, of a soul search in a way, because what is it? How do we codify the things that are most important, you know, from the golden rule kind of standpoint, but the things that are most important to us here at Azure, what we do, our purpose, so becomes the core values. So anyway, we ended up codifying 12 core values, and I would be happy to go through those because Every one of these is near and dear to my heart. And I feel like most all of these are near and dear to most of the team here at Azure now. It's, and that's been a great blessing to have a team that's for the most part fairly unified in this uh, philosophy, I guess, in a way. But so what do, what's, the, what's the purpose? What's our purpose here at Azure? And what do we build the foundation of our company on? Number one, expire healthy and abundant living. Now, this is my, you know, this is super foundational for me because abundant living and healthy living go hand in hand. When we have an abundant life, we have a healthy life. When we have a healthy life, we don't necessarily have an abundant life, but we have the opportunity to have an abundant life. All right? And my, view, my viewpoint has been that 
hey, we're always told that we live in a world of scarcity. Companies often create false scarcity to try to sell more because, you know, that's a, it's a marketing scheme. In the marketing world, they'll say, oh, create a, you know, this is only available at this price for the first hundred customers or something like that. They create a scarcity to try to create a miniature panic that you got to buy it real quick because there's a scarcity. I, you know, hey, it may be bad marketing practices, but I don't believe that way. I believe that we live in a world of abundance, that we should live our life fully, all that we have. And I'm not saying that we should ever waste resources. That's the, and as we get to different ones of these uh, core values, but we need to live with an abundant life uh, mindset. There is plenty, whether that's spiritually, emotionally, physically, whether it's food, whether it's move, you know, exercise, all the things that we do for health and to live a full life, we can do that with abundance. We don't have to say this is a world of scarcity. And, you know, I have, you know, when I was a young man, I made a very, very pointed decision in that, and I won't tell that story here today, but I had to make a very appointed decision whether I was going to live in a world of abundance or a world of scarcity, because it's the thought. The world is getting worse all the time. We should pull within ourselves, hunker down, and try to do survive and do what we can to, you know, get by and be a little bit under the radar. Or we're out here to make the world a better place. Whether the world's getting better or not is up to us, or if it's getting worse. Because we have the ability collectively, and so it's, but there's only one person I can control, and that's me. So if each one of us controls ourselves, that we are not hiding in the background, that are we in the forefront of doing what needs to be done for a better world, then the world will become a better place. When good people hunker down and do nothing, the, then evil begins to triumph. And that's exactly what the difference is, in my mind, between for abundant living. And of course, healthy living, I mean, Azure is all about food, but we'll get, to, we'll get to this. This is a greater one. It's not just about the food. This is about our whole lifestyle and our thought process. So there's kind of number one, and it's pretty core, and it's a core belief system to me. Um, <clears throat> number two, provide Azure Standard quality service. You know, if you get right down to it, Azure, for the most part, is a service company. You know, we, yes, we're a product-based company as well. We have farms and we grow products. But there's lots of farms that grow products. If you do not provide service, you, you provide products on what we call a commodities market, right? Um, and that's what, you know, hey, the very, very beginning, um, that's what Azure was started to try to get away from, is, hey, I, I want, if I'm going to raise quality agricultural products, the best grain, the best fruit, the best of the best, and then I just sell it in and mix it within everybody else's grain in the whole country, I'm not doing anybody any good. And my, you know, core philosophy is that the farm is where the, is the very beginning of health. The farmer is the guardian of the nation's health. And I believe that strongly. That is our mission as farmers. 
And if we just throw our stuff in with everybody else's commodities stuff, then it's doing very, very little good. Yes, we're growing something better. But it, by the time it's all mixed up with the other stuff, the, the benefit is very, very minor. So the service goes in. So we're here to serve. We're here to create a product that is convenient, that can be used, and we want to be able to serve our customers any way that they, that they need help. And so Azure's mission from the product level is to create a large variety of products. So everyone, you know, so almost anything that a family would need in the way of healthy food is available here at Azure. And we do a lot of special things that other companies don't do. For instance, you know, we repackage hundreds, well, thousands tip of, of things here at Azure. So we're able to create better efficiency and better availability by buying, you know, semi loads, totes, truck loads of various things and packaging it in such a way that it's convenient for, you know, and we're and convenient for your household. And we're always open, you know, if you see something that's not packaged in a convenient way, hey, we're always open to um, more suggestions on that. That's a, that's an, these, all these core values are living things. Another thing we've really been able to strive to do here at Azure is have people answer the phone. If you call Azure, my goal is that you get somebody, a live person, answer your phone call. And I can't say, you know, hey, phone calls don't come at a very even stream all the time. If they did, that would be very easy. Sometimes they, you know, there's huge spikes of phone calls. So I'm not saying there's never any hold time here at Azure. I wish I could say there was never hold time. But we do our best not to have a lot of hold time. But if you, if you want to talk to somebody here at Azure, we do answer the phone. And that is a part of this quality service. I feel like that's very important. Not very many e-commerce companies do that. Almost nobody does. They all say, oh, well, send an email or a text or something. But here, if we, we do want to talk to you, we want to talk to our customers and we want to answer the phone. And if you have a question or something that needs to be, that you need help with, even if it's not specifically related to your order, we want to be here to serve. And even if the person who answers the phone is unable to help you, part of the whole process is to go to the next person that may, the other person within the company that may know the answer to that. And we do have a lot of collective knowledge here at Azure. And I think that uh, we, can, we can help with a lot of those things. And we want to be here able to serve. And so we've been very careful to have a, um, a team that a actually answers the phone. And that's not exactly a you know, trivial or cheap process, but we do, we do want to be able to talk to you anytime. And not saying you can't email and stuff, that's all fine, but um, that is part of what we do. Number three, <clears throat> build relationships, forgive and embrace the moment. You know, Relationship is basically all the interaction that people have with one another. And if we have a good relationship, then we can work towards the world of abundance that we were talking about before. If we have a bad relationship where there's no trust, there's hate, there's animosity, it's very hard to get to that world of abundance. And if you look at that on a, you know, a large scale, when you see fighting, bickering, you know, when it comes to the national level, it could go all the way to war. That creates 
scarcity and unhealthy, everything unhealthy. There's nothing healthy or abundant about fighting, bickering, and war. And the, our goal is to forgive, embrace the moment. So we're for today. We want to not be grudge holding. And I'm not saying that we trust untrustworthy people. That, you know, occasionally there are untrustworthy people. But we forgive and we embrace the moment and we move forward. You know, Christ, the greatest teacher on earth, he, he one time, they asked him if, how many times we should forgive. And he said 490 times. And I think that was in a day. So that is, <clears throat> I think that's a principle that we can use anywhere in our life. If we're going to have an abundant and healthy life, not having grudges, not having bad relationships, having people that you can trust in your life, even if there are people you can't trust, I get that, but having people that you can trust in your life is very, very important. And as far as healthy food goes, and homesteading and farming and gardening and everything around that, we, we want to be trustworthy. Uh, we want to be able to earn your trust because there is nothing, we don't, we don't play any gimmicks here at Azure. And that's um, exactly what this is about. We build relationships that are true, that are grounded, and we don't let petty things break us apart. We forgive the petty misunderstandings and stuff. And this has been an amazing thing the past couple of years because we've gone through the last couple of years an extremely uh, extreme supply chain difficulties. And if we did not have really deep and trusting relationships with many of our vendors, and you then we would not have been able to supply food and products through this time frame. A lot of people, a lot of companies were not able to move all the way through, um, especially, I mean, things are getting a little bit better now in the supply chain thing, but the, without those relationships, that wouldn't have happened. But because there was some trust between us and those vendors, we were able to procure product when almost nobody else could. And so sometimes you think about it, oh, you're the customer, the customer's always right. You just, you know, let it, the chips fall where they may when it comes to vendors. But I've never, we, here at Azure, and we've never felt that way. The relationship with our vendors is just as important as the relationship that we have with our customers. It, it's, a, it's a line all the way through. And... You know, that's, uh, it's an important piece. So anyway, that's something that's, that can be used for business, for life, anywhere um, that, we're, that we're at. So let's see. Number four, embrace change, practice flexibility. So change, um, change is harder for some people than for others. Some people don't mind change at all. In fact, they get tired of things and want to change just for change's sake, which I'm not advocating per se. But change is always going to happen. And the ability to embrace change and practice flexibility is what has allowed us these rapid growth spurts here at Azure and the ability to do such a wide variety of things. I mean, most, you know, most companies specialize very quickly because they focus in on something and then build a box around it. And this is what we do. <laughs> and that's, that's really not what happens here. Um, change and flexibility are 
a part of what we have to do every day. And I will say, you know, just last spring when our uh, headquarters burned down, um, that was a huge change that happened very, very fast. And if we had not been well practiced at this core value, that would have probably shut us down. It was a huge blow. But because we'd already been practicing this core value of embracing change and practicing flexibility, we did not even have a late truck because of that. Now, there was some products that weren't on the truck that would have come from that facility. Uh, we had some out of stocks that, you know, <laughs> got burned up. We, I mean, the product wasn't there. But we were able to get up the next morning here at Azure um, and go to work in a new environment the very next day. And if that had not happened, uh, we would have definitely had to shut down for a time, or maybe permanently. But we had to... We, our team is so used to this practicing flexibility thing that we pretty much, within a day or so, pretty well had a plan for how we were going to operate without some very vital parts to the, to the underbelly of the company and how to rebuild those very, very quickly, which we were able to do and come back stronger and better from that than... In, in many ways, in some of those areas, we've already come back stronger than we were before. So I feel like that one served us really well when we had this major, uh, major thing that, that happened here at Azure. But any time that we get stuck in a box and we can't change and we're inflexible, it's kind of like the, the little willow tree, you know? If, if the tree can bend, it's probably not going to break in the wind. And if it's not flexible enough to bend, then the first storm that comes along, for Azure, maybe that was a fire. That probably wasn't our first storm, I'll guarantee you. But it was a major one that happened this past year. Uh, we would have broken. But because we were able to sway in the wind and come up with a, uh, a new plan, uh, which kind of feeds into the next core value, pursue learning and practice innovation. So <laughs> that's the other half of practicing flexibility because if you're flexible, yeah, it's change. I mean, you don't stand for anything. It's not the way it is. In reality, we're talking the flexibility goes into innovation. So we innovate, and sometimes, in the case of the fire, we had to do that very, very quickly. Sometimes that is over long periods of time. It's always making things just a little bit better. So we're innovating because just because nobody else has done it doesn't mean it can't be done. And just because it's slightly different than the industry standard, then doesn't mean that it's the wrong way to do it. And in many ways, Azure Standard is a company of innovation. We innovated a whole new methodology. They're really, yes, we're a little bit like an e-commerce company. We're a little bit like a distributor. We're a little bit like a warehousing company. We're a little bit like an on-farm sales company or a CSA. We have all of those aspects, but we have innovated a completely different model than any of those things. So, you know, if you're familiar with the Azure model and you know, we have plenty on that, but our model is slightly different than pretty much anybody else's in any of that space <laughs> because we innovated what actually works best for the, the people that have been buying from Azure. What do you, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's not because we want to reinvent the wheel all the time. It's because we want to innovate just a little bit better process and a little bit better process and a little bit better process. And we're not, we're not afraid to do something that nobody else has done before. And I definitely will tell you we have had a few fails. 
we have ha we have done things that did not work out well um, in our innovation, but hopefully we failed forward, and that's the important part. When innovation, when you're doing something for the first time and you're innovating, you're not going to have a hundred percent success. I don't think anybody does, and that's one of the things that makes folks fearful to innovate um, because there are fails. But if we can fail forward. <laughs> then innovation becomes a thing that is very powerful. And we're talking about pursue learning on the front of that because in order to innovate, we have to be able to learn. We have to not be stuck in what we know and learn new things. We have to be able to research new things. We have to be able to uh, continuous learning, uh, you know, Learning does not stop when we get out of school. And if it does, we have a problem because we're going to stagnate and that'll be the end. Uh, of course, some of us, you know, that didn't do much school um, have done most of our learning outside of school. Um, well, that's me at least. Not, not everyone on the Azure team by any means. But my you know my learning has all happened kind of on the job and by uh, you know I say the school of hard knocks but sometimes <clears throat> the school of hard knocks can be a pretty good teacher because we have actual practical knowledge and not just theoretical knowledge and there there is a big difference in that sometimes we see a lot of theory um, but theory hasn't been put into practice and once we put the knowledge into practice, and that's where innovation ties in with the, with the learning, is when we put, put it into, into uh, practice, we have something that can make changes, not only in the company, but in our whole environment. And in a way, we're changing the whole world in a small way as we innovate forward. So, um, all right, so... Number six, uh, dream our passions and live our dreams. So there's a, you know, and I think we have the quote on the website, but I just want to, obviously, I'll read it so I don't get it wrong here. Uh, vision without a task is a dream. A task without a vision is drudgery. And vision with a task is the hope of the world. So that's the quote that we have um, under this on the Azure website. I just wanted to bring that back too because there are zillions or people with great ideas are very, very uh, abundant. In fact, almost everybody has some great ideas. <clears throat> but if you don't have a task to put those ideas into motion, it's just a dream and it stays within you or within your head forever. And, and then most of those same people have a task that has nothing to do with their vision. And so their job becomes a drudgery because they're doing a task that they don't even understand the vision on. Maybe it's somebody else's vision. Maybe it's a good vision even. But if you don't understand the vision and know why you're doing that task, it becomes drudgery. If it can align with your vision or if you can, you know, if we can adopt a vision that maybe somebody else even thought up, then it becomes the hope of the world because we have that vision, whether it's ours or a modified version of ours or even if it's adopted from somebody else, and we adopt it fully and bring it into our heart and mind, and we have a task to accomplish it, work is beautiful. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not drudgery anymore, nor, do, nor are we unfulfilled. And that's what I really feel. I mean, you know, health, healthy and abundant living is my passion. So that, I am passionate about that. And that's, you know, what, what uh, Azure is about, you know, from the very top of this list but that's the dream that I dream and that's not just 
you know, that's where, wherever we're at. You know, if we're, dream our, um, if we, if we're living our dreams and our, and our passion, then we can live life passionately. And it's so, it's so much more fun than just getting by. And that's, in all areas of our life, it's not just at work and in our company. It's with our, with our families, um, with our communities, with our churches. Whatever it is that we feel is important enough in our life to take time with, if we can do that, if we can adopt that dream or fulfill the dream that we already have and live that out, it makes for a much, much happier life. And so that's what I really, you know, is important and this is kind of part of the reason we did this entire thing, so that we can say, hey, when people come to work at Azure, do you, is, can you adopt this vision and this dream? Can you be passionate about this? And obviously, each one has your own input, and there's a little different twist and a little different sub-dream, shall we say, with each one of those things. But it's very important that we're living our dreams and our passions, and we want that up front. Inspiring, healthy, and abundant living, if that's part of our passion and our dream, as well as these other things, um, then it's a much happier, um, much happier life because we are fulfilled and we have a purpose. <clears throat> All right, uh, number seven, support independent and family-owned ventures. You know, when Azure started in business back in the late 80s, there were um, over 100 small natural food distributors around the country that did things not exactly like Azure does. Like I said, we have innovated substantially, but some version thereof. Um, now, you know, 30, a little over 30 years later, there are, can be counted on one hand, the number of smaller independent food distributors that are left. And that's just in the distribution side. If you look in the, in the product side, it's probably just as, just as uh, the ratio is similar, all the you know, you know, in the health food market, there was tons of startups. Like in the late '70s, early '80s, I mean, things were really booming. Oh, there's a new market here, this natural foods thing. It's a big deal. So tons of tons of small startups happened, and you know, come about you know, within the last 10 years. A lot of those folks are getting older and um, they're getting older and, and did not pass on their vision to anybody else. So now there's, there's a handful of huge corporate conglomerates that are buying them all up. And I, hundreds of the companies that I have worked with over the years have been bought up by corporate conglomerates. Some of them we have continued to do business with if we felt like they were not, you know, the corporate conglomerate was still maintaining the vision of the founder. And some of them we have quit doing business with because we felt like they were moving from the vision of the founder and what the product stood for into the corporate conglomerate and it was just another label for their garbage. And there's definitely some of both. But here at Azure, we want to have as many independent and family-owned companies that we support as that we possibly can. And if you notice, we have a lot of startup brands ones that are just barely getting going because they're small companies. Um, and, you know, I've been told that nationwide, if you want to get national distribution on a product line in retail, 
then you can expect to spend close to a million dollars per SKU before you really can even uh, expect to have national distribution and start making money on that product. We want to change that here at Azure. We want startup companies, ones that are doing good things, to be able to have an outlet to get started with and get their wonderful products that they're really passionate about out to the people. And that's a big part of what, what Azure does, and that's important. All right, promoting healthy food from healthy soil. We are what we eat. Now, of course, that's very core to, to me. Azure started as a farm, still is. We still farm um, here at Azure. Uh, it's a whole division of what Azure does. Um, so knowing that the farmer is the guardian of the nation's health, that health starts in the soil, that the soil is the, one of the most important resources that we have in, you know, not only for food, but for pretty much everything that we, that we do. Soil is the foundation. And it's pretty important that we, um, that we take care of the soil, that our soil is, is abundant. Our planet can produce way more food than we're producing right now. I am a firm believer in that. I do not think we're anywhere close to maximizing the capacity. It's only the management of that soil that is iffy. Um, so healthy soil is managing that soil in such a way that we're doing it efficiently and that the food that it produces is producing health because it has the full uh, life-giving you know, oils and amino acids and minerals and sugars and everything that needs to be in the food is in there in the right um, ratios. And, you know, and I have, you know, I, I know I could go off on that tangent for another hour because I believe so strongly in it and I know how important that healthy food is, but it is a very, um, it's foundational to us here at Azure and what we do is that we're promoting the healthy food. So we do our best to make sure that the food that we supply, and I can't say we're, it's always a perfect world because it's, all, you know, uh, sometimes we have, you know, we have our farmers that we contract with, sometimes we have to buy other products and it's, but we vet it the best that we possibly can. All the product that comes in, know, to know that it's from as healthy soil as we can reasonably expect in a polluted world. And it's the best, you know, as I feel, it's the best of the best. And that's really important to me. And then, let's see, keep it clean and sustainable, you know. And how does that fit into all these other things? And, but it, it does in my mind, because if we're going to have an abundant world, we're taking care of the resources that we have. We're keeping things organized. We're keeping things clean. We're keeping things sustainable. Sustainable means that they can be reused. I mean, you see some things. I mean, Azure... Um, is very, very, as a company, we are very, very low waste. I can't say we're zero waste, um, close. But I can't, we can't get quite 100% to zero waste here at Azure. However, we have worked really hard to get close to that. We recycle, we repurpose, we reuse things in every way. So you notice probably many times when you're getting orders from Azure, for instance, and I'm just, um, just kind of as a for instance here, you're getting your order in a box that's been repurposed. It's come from something else. We reuse the boxes that we generate, you know, that the products come in, and we put other products in them, send them back out again. We repurpose boxes. We even buy 
waste boxes from other companies, misprints, for instance, that you know they were just going to shred, and we rebuy those buy those boxes to put product in. So sometimes it's branded, and I've been told so many times, why do you do that? That's just dumb. You should put everything in your branded box. Azure should be on every box that you send out. Say, well, I mean, if we have to buy new boxes, we'll put Azure on our box. I'm, I have nothing against that, but what I will say is that we're not going to go crush all these thousands of boxes and see all these boxes go to waste and in a landfill and buy new boxes because our core value says keep it clean and sustainable. So the sustainable use of boxes in a second and a third and a fourth time is very important to us. And that's just one small example. I just wanted to, because that's very customer facing. You don't get reused boxes probably from very many other companies that you order from. And I say reused or repurposed boxes. They're all boxes that our food came in or that we bought from other companies. Uh, pretty much just from food. We don't, we obviously don't, or brand new boxes that were just misprints or something like that. You know, we don't ever put, uh, you know, box, any product in boxes that may have had chemicals or anything like that in them. But we are very careful to utilize, reuse, and repurpose those. And, you know, we do that as well with other things. I mean, we resell are used empty 55 gallon drums and things like that. I mean, it's probably not cost effective, but it's a way to get it to somebody who needs a drum for a burn barrel or to store something in. And, and at the same time, we don't have to send it to the landfill. And, and it can be repurposed for somebody else's burn barrel or whatever, whatever that is. So that's, that's a big part of it. And then clean. Clean is a big deal because that, that hits every aspect of our life. Clean in the warehouse, you know, and we've made big strides in the past few years with allergen controls. So our, you know, anything you buy with the Azure label on it, unless we specifically say so, and there's a couple cases that we have to just because there's some mixture there, but we are very careful to make sure that that all the products we sell are clean. That, you know, if you're getting grain, that you're not getting some other allergen. You're not getting peanuts mixed in the grain or dairy or something else. Some people that may not be an issue with, but many folks, myself included, uh, that can be a problem. And so we've worked really hard on that aspect of keeping it clean. Um, another you know, another thing that always comes to mind when I think about clean is how we think. You know, am I keeping my mind clean? Am I thinking my, keeping my thought processes clean? Or am I allowing them to be just cluttered with everything? If I have a clean mind and clean communication, then our purpose is much more easily um, fulfilled. You know, we can only do, in a cluttered, a cluttered mind, cluttered body, cluttered workspace even, which by the way, you know, mine is no, my workspace is not immaculate, but it's, it's clean in the sense that it's not mixed up with things that don't, don't belong. And that's the way it is with our, you know, with our minds and our focus. If we keep our focus and our minds clean, I feel like a lot more can be accomplished. All right, so uh, number 10, create joy and fulfillment through serving and making a positive difference in the world. You know, um, service, you know, when we talked about Azure quality service here, number two, is this a duplicate? Well, maybe a little bit, but no, it's not really. It's creating the joy and fulfillment through serving. So it's not here that we're providing the quality of service, but that we're doing it joyfully. 
We want to do that in such a way that it creates joy, you know, and for each person that works at Azure, we want to have a joyful experience. Uh, it's not, you know, we don't want work to be drudgery. We want to have a joyful experience. And, and as we're joyful in doing what we do, in creating health and abundance, we are making a positive difference in the world. And so this is a, this is a really, um, this is near and dear to my heart that we're serving in a joyful way. And, you know, I've heard it told that, you know, reward in this world is based on the service that we give to others on the level of service that we get to others. And I see that that many times is true. Not always, but for the most part, that's true. We, be, we become rewarded if we give service. But the thing is, if we give service in a drudge with drudgery, so if we're, you know, if you think about this, you're, if you go into a retail store or something, and the person behind the counter says, oh, bleh, and you feel like you're putting them out to even come into the store, it doesn't make you feel very good, does it? And the positive difference, I mean, they may be actually giving you a service, you know, doing whatever that retail store does. When you come in and it's not joyfully, if you get met with a good morning, how can I help you kind of an attitude right from the very beginning when you have service with a smile, it makes everybody feel good. Not only the person that's coming into that establishment, but the person that's actually giving the service if they meet the day and the customer with a smile, even if they've already done it 500 times today, it still creates a much happier job. And so even though, you know, here at Azure, we're not, you know, it's not quite the same as a retail store. And like I say, it's not a perfect world. It's not, you know, we may not always have every employee that ever works at Azure come to work with a positive attitude every day. I get that. But the value is that we do, the, we do our work joyfully to the best of our ability and make it a fun, a fun time. <laughs> Have some camaraderie. Create joy. And our goal is that that joy comes through. Even though you only may be talking to us on the phone, that there still is a joy in what we do here at Azure. So... Um, that's, uh, that's another important piece. Um, number 11, exemplify personal transparency and open business practices. So there's this thing about, you know, what is transparency versus uh, airing your dirty laundry? And, you know, I've been told that quite a few times. And I always want to air on the side of maybe airing a dirty, little bit of dirty laundry rather than build too big a walls so that we are not actually, um, so that we're trying to operate in a black box. I am not a real st strong advocate of black box technology. In other words, technology that is only the elite few can understand how it works. Here at Azure, we want to freely share the information that can help. You know, in the marketplace, there's a huge, a huge uh, thing called, you know, information marketing. So there's all kinds of people that go out and they say, well, you know, we have this little thing here that you can... Uh, you can get this e-newsletter, you can get this or that, and if you pay me $29.95, then I'll teach you how to, you know, get rid of some health problem or something, or whatever it is. I feel like, you know, information and experience is not, it's not something that you tell people all the benefits they're gonna get and then sell them some home remedy for $29.95 or $59.95 or something else. 
No, here at Azure, our goal is to live with personal transparency. We want to share as much information as we can. You know, maybe we don't share all the right information all the right at the right time, and we're happy, you know, to get requests. If there are things you would like shared that, um, you know, that would, that's awesome. You know, one of the things that we did here uh, not too long ago, well, twice now, but a few years back when Azure was actually in a financial hard spot, we actually shared that with our customers and asked if people wanted to invest in inventory. And we still have a few customers that are invested in inventory, not that we really have to have that anymore. But we do have some customers that have still invested in inventory and we give them a return based on the sales of that product. And, you know, I was told, you know, hey, that was a really dumb move to go out and tell your customers that you're having financial difficulties. But it ended up working out very, very well here at Azure. Now, I mean, that's been you know, quite, quite a few years ago now, and much of that, you know, has changed. But, and then, you know, just last year, and actually we'll probably reach out again because um, for building the warehouse, we, we decided to kind of do the same thing. And this isn't about the financial difficulties, but about the difficulties with growth. So Azure has been growing quite a bit, <laughs> the last couple of years, it's been uh, phenomenal, actually, and lovely. Um, but um, we need more space, so we're we're uh, doubling the size of our warehouse, and of course, building is costly these days. And so we we went out to the customers and asked if hey, if you wanted to buy a few square feet of the warehouse as a as an investment. And, you know, and, and some took it up and we've gotten the warehouse to the point it's at paid for and probably for the next few months, we have enough to cover the next few months, but uh, we still have, uh, we haven't completely finished that. I just quit going out because it, there was an obvious delay. I was hoping that we were going to get the warehouse up last fall, but with permitting and all these things that. I didn't really think we we're going to take quite as long as they did. Um, uh, we did not get concrete poured before the before it got too cold. So we've got all the excavation done. We've got a bunch of the stuff, all the underside stuff done. But and the building is mostly paid for and being built. But the you know it's not up yet because we didn't get any concrete down. <laughs> so um, hopefully that will happen here very soon. So we have enough, you know, we, we got enough financing to cover all of it up to this point, but we will be going out again soon on that. Um, for the rest, you know, for the, what needs to go inside the building, the, you know, the electrical, the plumbing, the racks, all the different things that has to happen. So anyway, I was just using that as an example to show that sometimes even error the air on the side of airing a little bit of dirty laundry is a better way to go because then people, I think our customers can understand where we're coming from. And here at Azure, you know, I don't, <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing here to hide. This is a, you know, this is a family business. We do what we can and we make mistakes like everybody else. Um, but if we do, we want to own those things. And um, so it's, uh, it's forward thinking. And truthfully, other businesses that we work with, very f we, we try to stay away from having vendors that have black box philosophies as well. So if they come up and they just say, and they're unwilling to share, sometimes not on the label necessarily, but if they're unwilling to share the ingredients that are in their natural flavors, for instance, or spices, or those things, we just don't do business. Because that is a black box approach, and we don't really know what's in natural flavors, unless we do. 
And I think it's very important. I mean, some of the labels still say natural flavors, but you can rest assured that on those natural flavors, we have gone out to every one of those businesses every time and made sure that we at least know and that it meets our acceptable product list, which is on the website if you guys want to look at our non-acceptable ingredients list. And I think we've talked about that here on Founder Friday before. But um, we want to make sure that uh, that's completely transparent and that any company that doesn't, that thinks that that's the black box, you're not going to get that product here at Asher. It's just kind of the, the way that uh, we roll here. And then the last one, do more with less. And many people say, oh, that's your pity pincher, right? Hey, you got to, yeah, eh, no uh, more bricks and no straw or something like that. Uh, no, that's not really what that's about. That's about efficiency. The more efficient that we can be with what we do, the better that we be, the better service that we can give. The more efficient we can be with our processes, the better prices we can offer, for instance. The more efficient that we can be with what, you know, with everything that we do internally. And again, sometimes it takes a lot of innovation to create these efficiencies. That's a, that's a really important piece. But if we can do more with less, it creates more abundance in the long run. So instead of wasting resources, being inefficient in our processes, by being efficient, by doing things, by the, you know, going there by the shortest path when it's reasonable to do so, then we're able to create more abundance. And this is closely tied with abundance being taking good care of our resources whether that's our land our gardens our bodies our finances our emotional uh, well-being whatever of those things that we can take really good care of and we can do more and we can give more the more abundant that our life is going to be and that's where I see, you know, I, maybe we didn't write enough on that simple core value, do more with less. And I definitely have gotten the most kickback about that. But I tell you, um, it's a very important part of the big picture of inspiring healthy and abundant living. Because efficiency is all about um, having abundance. You know, the less that we waste, the more that we have. And I think that's a, you know, that's a key in, in all of our lives, whether it's in business or in our personal life or just in the way that we uh, act every day, um, day to day. So anyway, thank you, everybody. Uh, I Maybe I got a little bit long-winded on telling you all about the uh, core values but they are important to us, an important part here at Azure. And they are not something that got thought up in some kind of corporate boardroom to, you know, greenwash the company. That never happened here. This is, this is something that we did based on our purpose and what we're doing and the purpose that we're doing it for. So thank you for bearing with me. I appreciate your um, support. And, uh, you know, there is nothing, nothing greater than um, having a healthy and abundant life, a healthy and abundant family, a healthy and abundant community, which makes a healthy and abundant nation. Thank you.